people often ask us about the, the common problems that we see. And actually, it, 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 the one that we really see, most often, it's the power supply. And in fact, if I look at the people who are doing our, you know, working with our new customers, or even some of the support team, they'll be looking at it going, I've got another one here, it's the power supply. And what's really interesting about that is when we have customers who've got a circuit which is designed to work reliably, might be on a 2, 3G connection, might be running on LTE, might be CAT M1, but they've designed it and they've built it to operate inside a lab environment and they've tested it in the lab and it works absolutely brilliantly. But of course the problem they've got is when they take it out into the field and they install it well away from, typically the lab is going to be in an industrial area, it's got very good coverage, the mast's very close. They take it into the field, it's a long way from the mast, this means that the negotiation between the device and the mast means that the device is told to transmit at much higher power levels to reach the mast with a reliable signal. As soon as the device receives that instruction, it turns the power up to maximum transmit power, and as it's doing that, it draws more power from the battery, more power from the power supply. Now, depending on the hardware design, there might be a, a circuit that's up delivering the power to the cellular modem, or even a, a track on the PCB that's quite thin, narrow. And as soon as it starts to draw that extra power, it sucks it out and it, it, the power supply will dip. And that can give two problems. One, the modem itself, the power supply and the modem's dipped, and therefore it can't deliver the power it needs to and it will fall over. Alternatively, depending on the PCB layout, we've also seen it where that dip will cause the customer application, their microprocessor, to have a brownout on the power supply and need to restart. Now typically we see this when we're looking at the network side, where the device is uh, trying to connect, we see it connect to the network, we see it authenticate, and then it just drops off and has another go. And as soon as we see that, we go, well, that's a characteristic of a device where the power supply design hasn't met, doesn't meet all the requirements that the, that the modem needs. And when we see this, of course, one of the things we do is look at the circuit with the customers. And when we go back to them and look at it, and then look at the application note that the modem supplier has provided, we find that actually the circuit board doesn't exactly match what the designer of the modem has specified you need to do to make it a reliable connection. Um, and there are ways around that and again our development team can offer sometimes uh, software solutions which will give people an ability to work their way around the problem but often working with them on actually relaying out the hardware, making sure that the decoupling capacities are specified correctly and in the right places and then we see fantastic improvements on connectivity for these kind of devices.